Now let's rewind to the 1930s. Picture Alan Turing, a British mathematician with a mind ahead of his time. He envisioned a universal machine that could compute anything imaginable given the right instructions. This wasn't your grandma's adding machine. This was a blueprint for the future of computing. Turing's work laid the foundation for the computers we know and love, or sometimes love to hate. He's the OG of the digital age, even though he probably wouldn't know a smartphone if it hit him in the face, though he might have built one. Turing's legacy goes beyond theoretical machines. During World War II, he played a pivotal role in cracking the Enigma code used by the Germans. This was no small feat. It was like trying to crack the password to the internet, but with higher stakes. Turing's work shortened the war and saved countless lives, proving that brains and algorithms can be mightier than bombs. In the post-war years, Turing continued to explore the boundaries of computing, pondering artificial intelligence long before Siri and Alexa started setting our alarms. He imagined machines that could think, learn, and even compose music. Turing's vision continues to inspire computer scientists and AI researchers today, a testament to his enduring impact on the world. Early computers were essentially giant calculators with a touch of Frankenstein thrown in. We're talking room-sized behemoths with vacuum tubes and wires galore. These machines were expensive, finicky, and required a team of engineers to operate. They excelled at one thing, crunching numbers. Need to calculate the trajectory of a rocket? No problem. Want to predict the weather with questionable accuracy? Step right up. These early computers may have been clunky, but they paved the way for the sleek devices we use today. Imagine a time when cloud computing referred to actual clouds. These early computers were standalone behemoths, each one an island in a sea of calculations. But as technology advanced, so did the desire to connect these machines. Researchers and engineers began to explore ways to share data and resources, laying the groundwork for the interconnected world we live in today. From punch cards to magnetic tapes, the quest for efficient data storage and transfer drove innovation, pushing the boundaries of what was possible with computers. Computing wasn't just about building faster machines, it was about understanding the very nature of computation itself. Enter computer science, a field that emerged in the mid-20th century to explore the theoretical foundations of computing. Think of it as the brain behind the brawn. Computer scientists developed algorithms, those magical sets of instructions that tell computers what to do. They grappled with data structures, figuring out how to organize and store information efficiently. And they pondered the limits of computation, asking questions like, can we solve any problem with a computer? Spoiler alert. The answer is a resounding no, but that doesn't stop us from trying. This newfound understanding of computation had a profound impact on other fields. From physics to biology to economics, researchers began to realize that computers could be powerful tools for simulation, analysis, and problem solving. The ability to process vast amounts of data and test complex models revolutionized scientific inquiry leading to breakthroughs in fields as diverse as drug discovery, weather forecasting, and financial modeling. Computer science wasn't just a niche field anymore, it was becoming an indispensable tool for understanding the world around us. In 1965, Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, made a bold prediction. The number of transistors that could be crammed onto a microchip would double approximately every two years. This became known as Moore's Law, and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy, driving the tech industry to innovate at a breakneck pace. Computers got smaller, faster, and cheaper year after year. This exponential growth in computing power had a profound impact on society. What was once the domain of governments and large corporations became accessible to the masses. The personal computer revolution was about to begin, and with it, a fundamental shift in how we work, communicate, and entertain ourselves. The world was about to get a whole lot more digital and Moore's Law was the engine driving this transformation. The 1980s ushered in the era of personal computing. No longer were computers confined to sterile labs and corporate offices. They were invading our homes, albeit in beige, boxy glory. Companies like Apple, IBM, and Commodore battled for dominance, each offering their own vision of the future of computing. The Apple II, the IBM PC, the Commodore 64, 
These machines became icons of the decade, sparking creativity and unleashing a wave of digital innovation. The personal computer revolution wasn't just about hardware, it was about empowering individuals. Word processing replaced typewriters, spreadsheets simplified accounting, and video games offered an escape from reality, or at least pixelated versions of it. The PC became a canvas for creativity, a tool for education, and a portal to a world of information. It also spawned a generation of entrepreneurs, hackers, and tech enthusiasts who would go on to shape the digital landscape we know today. In the 1960s, the idea of computers talking to each other started to take shape. No, they weren't gossiping about their human overlords, yet. This was the birth of computer networking, a pivotal step towards the internet as we know it. The first iterations were, shall we say, primitive. Imagine sending a message and waiting days for a response. Instant gratification? Not so much. But hey, it was a start. One of the earliest and most influential computer networks was the ARPANET, funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. Its purpose? To connect researchers at different institutions, allowing them to share information and collaborate on projects. Little did they know, they were planting the seeds for a global communication revolution. The ARPANET's success in the 1970s paved the way for the development of TCP-IP, the communication protocol that forms the backbone of the Internet today. In the early 1990s, something magical happened. The World Wide Web was born. No longer was the Internet a playground for academics and techies. It was becoming accessible to anyone with a modem and a thirst for knowledge, or cat videos. The web browser, with its intuitive interface and hyperlinks, opened up a world of information and possibilities. Remember the agonizingly slow speed of dial-up? The shrill screech of the modem connecting? Those were the sounds of a revolution in progress. Email connected us with friends and family across the globe. E-commerce took its first steps, and online communities began to flourish. The internet was no longer just a network of computers. It was becoming a network of people, ideas, and experiences. Remember when phones were just for making calls? Yeah, good times. The arrival of the smartphone in the late 2000s changed everything. Suddenly, we had miniature computers in our pockets, capable of browsing the web, playing games, and connecting us to the world in ways we never thought possible. The iPhone, with its sleek design and intuitive touchscreen interface, set a new standard for mobile computing. App stores sprung up offering a dizzying array of software for everything from ordering food to finding a date. The smartphone became our constant companion, a source of information, entertainment, and, let's face it, occasional distraction. With smartphones came social media, and the world would never be the same. Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram, TikTok. These platforms became the digital town squares of the 21st century, connecting billions of people worldwide. We share our thoughts, our photos, our deepest desires, and our lunch with the world. Social media has had a profound impact on our lives, for better or for worse. It's a powerful tool for social movements, allowing people to organize and mobilize around shared causes. It's also a breeding ground for misinformation, echo chambers, and the occasional internet troll. Love it or hate it, social media is here to stay, and its long-term impact on society remains to be seen. So, what's next for computing? Hold on to your hats because things are about to get weird. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is rapidly advancing, promising to revolutionize everything from healthcare to transportation. Imagine self-driving cars, personalized medicine, and virtual assistants that actually understand what you're saying, most of the time. Then there's quantum computing, a mind-bending technology that harnesses the bizarre laws of quantum mechanics to perform calculations that are impossible for even the most powerful classical computers. Quantum computers could lead to breakthroughs in material science, drug discovery, and cryptography. It's still early days, but the potential is mind-boggling. From Alan Turing's groundbreaking work to the smartphones in our pockets, computing has come a long way in a remarkably short time. What was once the domain of mathematicians and engineers is now an integral part of our daily lives. We use computers to work, to learn, to connect with loved ones, and to share our cat videos with the world. 
What does the future hold for computing? It's anyone's guess, but one thing's for sure, it's going to be interesting. Maybe one day, our AI overlords will look back on these early days of computing with a nostalgic chuckle, reminiscing about the good old days of dial-up and floppy disks. Or maybe they'll just unplug us and be done with it. Either way, it's been a wild ride. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Albo.